Senator Crusaders, welcome to our latest special, COVID-19, America Stands Strong. Last week or two weeks ago, we were able to talk to Kelly, who's a, a nurse. She lives in Michigan, but she is on her 19th deployment uh, with Samaritan's Purse. She's on week three, I guess she's about wrapping up now, uh, of her month-long deployment uh, in Italy. And it was an amazing conversation, and I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. Uh, so I want to continue that with Bev Caulfield. She's the team lead for Samaritan's Purse in Pomona, Italy, and she's with us right now. Bev, how are you today? I'm great. It's a beautiful spring day here. Um, there's lots of discharges. Uh, the staff for uh, just uh, entertaining our patients um, behind me. Uh, and yeah, it, it's actually a really great day today. It looks like a beautiful day, but you must be exhausted, no? How long have you been there? I've been here for, I was uh, the part of the first advanced team. There was four of us that came. Um, about nine hours before the rest of our team. And so I've been here since I believe it was March 16th. So, um, yeah, a month. So you've already been a month. Unbelievable. Um, real quick, give us the, in case people aren't familiar, before we get to the specifics, what is Samaritan's Purse? Samaritan's Purse is a non-denominational uh, faith-based organization that goes into the world wherever there's disaster, famine, um, sickness, infectious disease like this, wars. And we meet people in the ditches of life who have been um, victims of all these things. Uh, regardless of who, we, who they are, uh, we serve them. And I've been working for Spendus Purse for 21 years this June. Um, it's been an absolute, uh, it's been an incredible adventure. Um, and uh, yeah, we've, we've been in uh, Ebola outbreaks in Liberia and DRC. Uh, we've been outside of the local emergency field hospital. We were in the Bahamas in the fall. Uh, 2010 Haiti earthquake. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. Whenever there was a disaster, war, or anything like that, you could usually find us. Yeah, you guys are amazing. Okay, let's give some specifics. So let's start with maybe some of the, we'll get to the good news or good things you've seen, inspiring things, uh, but maybe start with some, some difficult things that you've seen this last month or so. Yeah, when we first got here, Mike, it was just before the peak of the, um, the coronavirus here in Italy. So uh, they say, the epidemiologist said that the peak was probably March 21st. We got here a few days before. So the Cremona hospital that were, were basically in the parking lot of their hospital, and they were so overrun. They had patients everywhere. They had so many people on vents. Um, and you can just really see in their staff just how burdened they were, how exhausted they were. A lot of their staff had gotten sick. Um, and so that was something right away that we're just like, you know what, we need to help these people. It was just, it was a very, um, just uh, a sad place to be, in all honesty, mm. and seeing the desperation that was here. Uh, so when we were able to get this hospital set up and have people come over um, right away, you know, we just wanted to help alleviate that burden on the hospital. Um, obviously, there are a lot of, you hear a lot of sad stories. There's a lot of uh, people here that left loved ones. Um, when they went, they got sick and came to the hospital, only to find out that their loved one got, got sick at home and died by themselves at home. Um, mm. And that was something that was really hard to hear, and then also to um, having to share with them that they've lost a loved one. Um, but you know, our staff are incredible, our nurses, our doctors, uh, just being able to sit with people, to pray with them, to be with them, to make them feel loved, and, and most importantly, that they're not alone. And so I think that's a really important thing. With this virus, family can't come visit them, um, and so they are left alone, but at least here, our incredible staff are with them 24-7. Yeah, that's, I think that's, at least spiritually and emotionally and mentally, that's the hardest thing, is that you're alone, suffering, and then maybe even dying. But that's a, that's a scenario I haven't even thought of, Bev, where someone is sick with COVID in the hospital, and then their loved one goes home, and they are sick at home and sick and die. And then you have to tell the person in your, that you're helping that a loved one died. Is that right? That's how that went? Yeah, that, that's how oh, it, it goes, yeah. And now we How have do people you, here. We, sorry, go please ahead. Please go ahead. I, I was just going to say, how do you how do you spiritually help someone who went th who's going through that? How, how do you how do you minister there? You know, there there's something very beautiful with just the act of presence. Being present with someone as they're going through something um, is it can be very very powerful in a very isolated state. So when we have to do this, we of course uh, talk to the family beforehand, um, and the family, one family member will sometimes come, and of course they can't go inside. So we have, uh, 
we actually have some Italian pastors here who are able to go inside with our nurses, sit with that person, and we have a private place behind the ward where they can then be told and they can be with someone there. Um, and I think spiritually, I mean, there's nothing you can say to bring a person back, and we know that. But we can be present with them and tell them that there is still hope for them um, and that, you know, we are here for them and we're going to pray for them and we're going to support them. And I think that's, that's really, really important. There's not a lot of answers sometimes for things like this, but there's some, some sort of hope that we can give them through, through Jesus and through praying with them and being present and loving them. You know, that, that's all we can do at this point. Slater Crusaders, thanks for watching the first on YouTube. If you want more, like, subscribe. We got plenty.